scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast, this time talking about the mind of the Hordiac, or just mind of Hordiac, written by Russell T. Davis and Scott Hancock. No, that sounds very sarcastic. It was originally written by Russell T. Davis and sent to the BBC, who promptly didn't make it. Now, I very rarely come out on a negative side for a review, especially with Big Finish, because I just adore their output. Recently, the solar releases have been absolute gems. Let's face it, both bakers are great actors, truly. So, when it was discovered that Russell had found his original script for the Sixth Doctor story during the lockdowns, it was brought to our attention. We went, oh, that's kind of exciting. And then it's arrived. And we've listened to it, and it is down as one of the Doctor Who Lost stories, a completely separate range, which keeps being added to as time goes by. Now, the problem with the Lost range, really, is that they're not originally specifically written for audio. They're written for TV. They do have a distinctly different feel. So we have to keep that in mind. There's a lot of things in the Lost Range that make you go, oh, I can see why they didn't make that. Now, this is arguably juvenilia, although Russell was, of course, working at the height of his powers for the entirety of his life. And we simply love Russell. That's it, you see. Do you want to insult the new boss? Not really. Do you want to have a go at something? But you want to be honest. This kind of just isn't for me. It feels very, very much like a Doctor Who story that would be part of the Sixth Doctor's time. It would be him and Bonnie in a season that we never got because it switched over to McCoy. But it fits perfectly in that gap. It feels very, very much like TV. But TV from the season that was lost, that we just never really got. Because they switched Doctors. We didn't get more of Colin. We never got to see Colin and Bonnie, which we should have, because let's face it, on audio they work beautifully. Colin's performance is fab. Now, one of the recurring themes in this episode is that the Doctor's just been reading The Wind in the Willows. There are reasons behind this which are gone into on the extras. But it's really nice that such a literary doctor gets to quote and see parallels with what's going on and The Wind in the Willows. And, of course, know the Watsonian end of how Wind in the Willows was written and it affected people. It's very, very nice. Look, here's the synopsis. In the depths of space, the mysterious Hodiac is manipulating the galactic stock market. To raise money, his aim to hire mercenaries for a deadly quest across the stars. Meanwhile, on Earth, an ordinary British family is plagued by a series of psychic events. One thing connecting these events is a magnificent patchwork coat, which just so happens to belong to the Doctor. You see, that makes you think that the coat's going to be a major recurring theme of the storyline. Even the guy with the glowy eyes on the front of the box has got this Doctor's coat on. You think it's going to be a major thing, but it's more of a MacGuffin or a a rosebud. Something that would be kind of cool, but it doesn't seem to have been milked enough. It doesn't feel like a well-thought-out thing to put into the pitch. But then again, if you get any more, the important bit is, is that the cast, the cast is great. Now, Annette Badland who is becoming a stalwart, ooh, that's a word you don't hear often, of Big Finish, puts in a storming performance as Mrs. Chin. Now, it was kind of weird. You were thinking, why is she called Mrs. Chin? What's going on? 
But then, because my brain works terribly slowly, and you'll have got there well before me, is it implied that she is the wife of the now deceased Mr. Chin from the Pertwee era? I like to think that that's the case. That's why this character has that name. Because the other reasons that she would have this name are just weird. So that works beautifully. It really does. Thinking about it, the story wasn't bad. It just didn't feel as rustly or as big finishy as we're used to. Does that make sense? But it's neither of those things. It is a lost story. So perhaps the worst thing I can say about any of these things is it just wasn't quite for me. As always, I can't wait for Russell to take over the TV who... But this one... I think the big surprise for me is that I wasn't going to... Here we are. I can explain it nicely this way. Douglas Adams had a handful of very, very good story ideas. And when he had a good story, he was going to use it. Repeatedly. Russell's written countless... Well, you actually can count them, but countless Doctor Who stories. And you would think that the themes of his early work, just like Stephen Moffat's themes from his one-shot comic relief special, reoccurred time and time again in his actual proper Doctor Who. This was his first time out. So you would expect some of his themes and works to reoccur, but Russell's work's so rich and so deep in general that he can afford to burn up old ideas and just let them go. These ideas never reoccurred anywhere else, and if they did, I can't spot them and you're a better Doctor Who fan than me. But then again, you probably are a better Doctor Who fan than me. Here's the trailer. Decide for yourself. And until next time, be seeing you. There was panic in the parlour and howling in the hall. Doctor Who! Oh! From Big Finish Productions, Doctor Who, Mind of the Hodiac. <sighs> the other is out there. Actively aware. She knows that I am searching and is afraid. She's out there. Somewhere in the wide worlds. Not again! Not again! Put it all down! Whatever you are! Why? Why do you keep doing this to us? This institute is dedicated to research in the field of psychic science. The power granted to the human mind, taking us one step closer to the angels. Your mind, his mind, his mind in your mind. Two minds, one mind. Something setting coordinates! Doctor, 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 What's happening? Why are you doing this? It's gone. Whatever it was, it's... it's gone. But couldn't you feel it? The strength of it? A mind, a magnificent (sighs) mind. Is that it? It's over! No. It is far from over. The battle lines have been drawn. We march upon the earth. Big finish for the love of stories. That was the Doctor Who Tin Dog Podcast. Available on iTunes, YouTube, Twitter, RSS, Vimeo and across the internet. Doctor Who and its associated properties are all copyright and trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Why not become a supporter by visiting patreon.com slash tin dog. Contact the show on tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. 